It took me imaginatively and figuratively through many countries in Asia, trying to bring to life part of their culture. I selected a few places that are close to my heart and wish to share it with you all today. The map shows the areas I'm covering. In India, it will be Kerala in the southern part, Mumbai in the west, Udaipur and Varnasi in the northwestern region. And the South Asian countries which reflect the tradition, religion and culture seamlessly being Hong Kong, Burma and China. As you all know, India is a very diverse, inclusive and secular country. Though 80% of the Indians are Hindus with their pantheon of gods and epic history, there is an expression of countless faiths in the country. Wherever there is religion, culture and tradition, bells form an integral part of their lives. Almost in every home in India, there will be a special room called the puja room, where the family always pray together. The interest in spirituality starts early and is quite evident in homes, schools and at functions. Now, I will take you through an interesting journey into temples where bells play a significant role. The Dwajasthambam or the flagpole is of great importance in temples as it is its backbone. It is also referred to as the spiritual connector, the scientific reason being that it protects the temple from the natural fury of lightning strikes. The arrestor is placed at the highest point of the temple, which induces the charge through it. As we all know, the arrestor conducts the heavy electrical impulse directly to the ground thus preventing the building from getting damaged. Hence, every temple will have a Dwajasthambam at its entrance. 
this serves a dual purpose of spiritual and scientific needs. This flagpole is made of a single longest erect wooden post clad with copper and aesthetically beautified with pure gold leaf. The tallest flag post is in Kerala. It is in the famous Krishna temple. This dates back to the 16th century and is estimated to be at least 500 years old. The height of this flagpole is 110 feet and is fully gold plated and has wind chimes at its top to continuously ring in the wind as is in the picture. The next place I take you to is in Maharashtra. Lord Hanuman is the mighty ape or the powerful monkey god who aided Lord Rama of the Ramayana epic in his expedition against evil forces and is one of the most popular idols in the Hindu pantheon of gods. Hanuman or the monkey deity is worshipped as a symbol of physical strength, perseverance and as an ultimate expression of devotional values. The picture shows a famous Hanuman bell. The following video shows a 26 feet sculpture that was installed in the western state of Maharashtra in the city of Mumbai, the financial capital of India, to promote an animated film. Here, they have used 26,500 brass bells to make this grand piece of interactive art. When one touches the Lord's feet, the whole sculpture rings and the vibrations make the devotee feel the blessings. Very ingenious indeed. This film was featured in many international film festivals. Now, we go to a spectacular palace in the northwestern part of India. Here is the famous lake palace built in the middle of Lake Pichola. It is often referred to as the Venice of the East.
this white marble palace built in the 17th century on a solid foundation of four acres or 176,000 square feet of rock amidst the azure Lake Pichola by the royal family of Udaipur. This palace has become the wedding destination internationally for it is one of the most romantic places on earth. The present Maharaja of Udaipur, the 76th custodian of the Mewar dynasty, His Royal Highness Sriji Arvind Singh, has a family temple a few miles north of Udaipur called the Ek Lingji Temple, which the royal family owns for the last 1300 years. The deity inside this temple is considered by every ruling Maharaja as their counsellor, mentor and their direction provider in taking key decisions on the welfare of the state that they rule. The photograph given by the Maharaja himself shows us the sketch of the bell and the picture. This bell is made of silver, which is in pristine functioning condition, even after so many years of usage. These bells have adorned the temple from its inception and are an integral part of the temple. Each of the bells with the silver chain weighs 110 pounds. When Sriji visited our home in Chennai, he presented me a similar bell from the Udaipur temple. Now, we move on to the southeastern coast of Asia to an equally enchanting country that is Hong Kong now part of China, a civilization as rich and ancient as India. The Manmo Temple in Hong Kong was built in the 18th century by Chinese merchants for their god of martial arts. This temple was used as a place for resolving matters relating to the Chinese community and is still used to invoke prosperity for Hong Kong. The Manmo Temple was declared as a monument by their Antiquities Authority. The Mingguin Bell is in Burma, now Myanmar, which is located north of Mandalay on the western banks of the Irwadi River. It was the heaviest functioning bell at different times in history, weighing 90 tons. 
The weight of the bell is written on the surface in white as in the photograph. It stands 20 feet high from the rim to the top. It is rung by striking the outer edge of the bell. But in the year 2000, it was eclipsed by the good luck bell in China, which hangs in the Fokuan Temple. weighing 116 tons, which is the heaviest functioning bell till date. Finally, I conclude by returning to a most sacred city in my country, India. I am referring to Varnasi, where the holy river Ganges flows. This river, rising in the western Himalayas in India, flows through the country and enters the Bay of Bengal. This 1,569 mile flow of water is the most sacred river for the Hindus. This video shows a group of priests performing an evening aarti, a daily ritual as a dedication to River Ganga and the whole universe. It is a spectacular event that many visitors to India make it a point never to miss the colourful event. Recently, even Prince Charles and Camilla participated in the Ganga Aarti on their visit to the Ganges.